When it comes to flavor, we got you with the new bourbon bacon cheeseburger. Here are 10 more sneakiest food business tactics you never notice scamming you. Part three, because all around, businesses are trying to dazzle you into spending more money. But who know the difference? The people being whipped. Ah, ah, ah. Sensory overload. Ooh. Yum. Have you guys seriously never heard of donuts? When you walk into a restaurant or grocery store, the mix of enticing smells is overwhelming, and you can barely tell where it's coming from. But all you know is that you've got to find out. And that's exactly what these businesses are counting on when you step foot into the store. You see, nothing is placed anywhere at random. There's always a strategic reason behind it. For example, in grocery stores, bakeries and flower shops are usually put near the entrance. But not for your convenience, because these two sell the best best smelling items in the whole store. These smells can trigger your hunger, which can cause you to fill up your cart more than you originally intended to, and ultimately make you spend more money. I'm talking about this. If you're not sure if this trick actually works or not, just think of it like this. Think, Mark! Would you be so keen to go to the grocery store if the fish section was the one greeting you at the door? Probably not, and this is exactly why this manipulation of your senses works so well. It's all about the mood. How's everybody doing mm. over here? Dolly, it's oh, so good. It's oh, really? so good. When you go to a restaurant, the first impression is crucial, especially in a place where you sit down. You might notice the little things, like if it's really loud and busy, or if there's a flickering light that might give you a headache later on. But in reality, there's so much more going on than what you see. As soon as you step into the restaurant, everything is designed to make your stay there as long as possible, in hopes that you will spend way more than you originally intended to. Shut up and take my money! For instance, there's the music. Fancy sit-down restaurants will obviously not be blasting loud, up-tempo music that buries all of your conversation. Instead, they'll play soft, slow music to put you at ease, something you probably won't even notice unless you pay close attention. The same rule goes for the lighting. There's nothing more unpleasant than eating your meal under aggressively bright lights. You know, that kind that makes your eyes hurt after only a few minutes. Did I die? That's usually the lighting found at fast food places, to get you out of the door and to avoid loitering. But fine dining establishments want the complete opposite. It has been proven that dimmer, mellow lighting will most likely get people in a more relaxed mood and entice them to stay and spend more. A sneaky tactic that often flies right under most people's radar and yet works like a charm. Ridiculous deals. Yeah! Sir, you order? It feels like a big win oh. when you get a deal like this. Have you ever gone to the grocery store with the intention of buying only one thing, but then ended up buying an absurd amount of it? Well, we are sorry to break this to you, but you don't always need to load up your cart with things you don't need just because there's a sale. Oh my god! We're having a fire sale! Sure, at first it might seem like a good bang for your buck, but that's until you read all of the fine print. Most of the time, if you take the time to look at the actual deal, you'll realize that it still applies even if you don't overflow your pantry with unnecessary merchandise. Those 10 for $10 deals are a plain business scam that's only meant to trick your brain into buying more than you actually need. But even if you know this trick, you still need to be careful. You see, sometimes you actually do have to buy the advertised amount for the discount to apply. There's just no way of knowing until you read the conditions, which is usually written in tiny print for a reason. No one ever really bothers looking, so they just assume they need to buy all 10 all the time. Just read, be wary of conditions, and ask yourself if you truly need 10 jars of sauce or not. You're a very bright young man, James, but you need to lay off the sauce. Free samples. Oh, could I just try a little sample? Oh, I'm so bad. We're all guilty of this, going to the grocery store to buy essentials, but end up being sidetracked by a bunch of free, tasty treats flaunted in our face. 
You probably weren't planning on buying anything that wasn't on your list, but since you got a taste of those delicious free sample cookies, they somehow ended up in your shopping cart. This, folks, is the power of free samples. At first, the bite-sized samples might make you feel like you're saving money since, well, they're labeled as free. But in reality, it's subconsciously pushing you to buy the full-sized item, and maybe even more. Indeed, marketing studies have shown that freebies are more than just an act of kindness by companies. It's also a powerful and effective promotional weapon. Sir, is there a problem? I'm just making sure no one ever has to eat this. Getting a free sample will supposedly improve your customer loyalty towards not only the product, but also the company that's offering them. And even if you didn't even like it that much, chances are you'll probably end up buying that block of cheese anyway, because that's how the strategy works. In exchange for free food, people will feel compelled to do something nice in return, like purchasing the product as a way to say thank you for the sample. It's basically a win-win situation, sort of. You gonna buy a cookie this time? Oh, I better just stick with the sample. I'm so bad. You feel good about getting free food, and the stores increase their sales with every sampled product. The grab-and-go. Uh, I prefer the break us apart option. Picture this. You did it. You finished your entire grocery run without succumbing to the temptation of free samples or the potato chip aisle. You only got the things you needed, no more, no less. Then, once you get to the cash, all your willpower is gone as soon as you spot those candy bars. And before you know it, your cart is full of them. Is this scenario too familiar? Don't worry. It happens way more often than you'd think, and that's because those candy bars are put there on purpose in hopes of doing exactly that. Hey, Joe, we're down to the last Butterfinger. Ah! The last Butterfinger! The reason why registers are lined up with candy, soda, and all kinds of junk food is all about visibility. Since they're not items you would normally seek out during a routine grocery trip, they're placed in a highly visible place where you'll inevitably see them, even if you weren't looking for them. But it's not just about visibility, because if it were, they would be right at the entrance of the store. Get a crispity, crunchity, peanut buttery burst in every bite of Butterfinger. No, it's also because of a concept called decision fatigue. It basically means that your willpower is like a muscle, and the more you use it, the more tired it becomes, and the less likely you'll be able to resist the urge to buy a candy bar or two. The power of psychology. Well-designed menus. Hello, welcome to McDonald's. May I take your order, please? When it comes to building a business, nothing is left to chance, not even the way the menu is designed. Everything is strategically written and placed to ensure that you order the most expensive items available. We've already talked about how words are important in previous parts, so now let's talk about where those words are. Location is key to a restaurant's success in more ways than one, starting with the menu. The middle of the page and top corners of menus are usually the areas that draw the customer's eyes. And they they're also where you'll find the most expensive, high-margin items, like the seafood or pasta selection. Look at that. Not only will it catch your eye and increase the chances of one of those items selling, but it will also make the rest of the menu look much cheaper in comparison. But that's not the only thought that goes behind the design of the menu. Looks like meat's back on the menu, boys! Boxes, borders, and white spaces are also known to attract the eye, which is why if you ever see an item surrounded by one of these, you know the restaurant really, really wants you to order it. The Daily Special. We just got a couple minutes when we're gassing up. What's ready? I can give you the space soup or the space special. This next tactic is used profusely in sit-down restaurants, and you probably have never even noticed it, no matter how blatant it is. Every restaurant has a list of specials that most likely changes daily or weekly, depending on the availability of the ingredients that is supposed to highlight the chef's skills. However, those specials always seem to be a little more on the pricey side. Why is that? Would you like to hear the specials? Not if you want to keep your spleen. 
Well, it's all about exclusivity and intrigue, if anything. Since the specials aren't usually printed out on the menu directly and it's up to the server to explain them, it makes customers curious and enticed to try them out. And because they can't be found on the menu, that also means that the prices aren't either. Servers will usually simply rattle off a list of specials without mentioning any dollar figures, even though they are normally more expensive than everything else on the menu. Little Caesar's hot and ready lunch combo is now four bucks instead of five. Either way, it's a sneaky technique that is frequently used and that is often forgotten about. Don't forget to make an enlightened choice and ask about those prices. Assumed refills. Just drink, I like it. I know, it's great, right? Another! In America, we usually don't have to worry about refills, they're almost always free. That's a concept so anchored here and yet so strange and unknown for many countries around the world. Whenever your server comes around to refresh your glass of coffee or iced tea, you're probably used to just agreeing, assuming that all those refills are covered by the original price of the drink. Most of the time, that's very true, and you won't have any trouble, but that doesn't mean that there aren't any sly restaurants out there that don't tell you the whole truth when they constantly top off your drink. Indeed, sometimes the restaurant will charge you for every refill but won't tell you directly. Instead, it'll either be written in the menu's fine print or not mentioned at all and will let you guess whether or not you should blindly accept those offers. I'm gonna throw a few numbers out at you and you put them together in your head as quick as you can. Since we're so used to having them for free, it might not seem like such a big deal at first, but just think about how many times you actually end up refreshing your drink. The bill can go quickly up, especially for large tables. In other words, if it's not clear if the refills are free or not, just ask. Make sure we can't get you a refill, Bob. That way, you'll have a clear conscience and it could possibly save you a pretty penny. The trendy ingredient. I want my McNugget tipping sauce, Szechuan sauce, Morty. That's what's gonna, gonna take what us all the way to about? the end, Morty. Every once in a while, we get food obsessions we can't seem to shake. Our lives get controlled by it for a while until it eventually passes. But what about collective food obsessions? You know, that one thing that we sort of all agree to start eating like there's no tomorrow? Just take avocados, for example. While it's still at a somewhat peak, over the last couple of years, the fruit has known an impressive rise to fame, and the food business was well aware of that. It was practically impossible not to find at least one dish with avocado, no matter where you went, even at fast food chains. This is also why every single one of those dishes was always a little more expensive than regular offerings. See? Avocado toast! We can still make this work! Supply and demand. Once the hype over the trendy ingredient begins to die down, the prices usually go back down as well, leaving the spotlight for a new star. The same thing happened with kale and quinoa, which until not so long ago were mere run-of-the-mill ingredients. Avocado, how about avocado don't? Pro tip, wait for the trend to pass and you'll be able to enjoy the same dishes only at a much friendlier price. Self-serve kiosks. Give me a uh, pie, apple. Do you want me to hold the spit? Self-serve kiosks have literally revolutionized the world of fast food. They change the way we order our food for what we'd like to think the better, as they allow people to order in peace and quiet without any kind of human interaction. This seems like it would be the perfect way to avoid the usual upselling from employees. And while it is, that doesn't mean that it's safe from other forms of tricks to get you to spend more. Would you like some fries with that? No, I'm all right. Are you sure they took the crispy golden perfection? In fact, in fact, it has been proven that since McDonald's started adding these kiosks in almost every location, sales have gone up exponentially. That's because people will usually spend more time at the kiosks than they would ordering from real-life employees. People are now exploring the menu while looking for their usual, which leads them to add more stuff to their order, items they probably wouldn't have thought of otherwise. Another reason why self-serve kiosks are so successful is that they make customers feel more at ease. They offer convenience, privacy, and control over how fast they order, something that can't always be achieved when you're being rushed in an already long line of impatient people. You know what? The odds are I will never come back here again. There's a good chance of that. 
that! That's a chance we'll have to take! The ultimate way to avoid getting scammed and spending too much money when visiting a fast food restaurant is to know exactly what you want in advance. Looking for more? Just tap or click another video, then hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell.